Hey guys. Hey party people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Presley Rausch and today we're going to be discussing the books I have read since July. So we have the second half of the year. I haven't made a book video in a while. We're going to discuss everything I've read. Like and subscribe, you know the jizz. There's so many books, so we're going to dive right in. Okay, starting off with July, the first book I read was A Certain Appeal by Vanessa King. This is a Pride and Prejudice kind of burlesque spin. It's really fun if you're a fan of Pride and Prejudice. It's not by any means an amazing romance story. It's just, it's just fun if you like Pride and Prejudice. The next book I read, people have raved about and gotten tattooed on their bodies. And it is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I'm definitely gonna have to reread one day because it, there's so much. It was incredible. I loved it. I love the devil. Addie LaRue makes a deal with the devil. It's not what she expected as all deals and bargains often go. And it's incredible. It's incredible. You just gotta read it. In my opinion, I like to walk into books not knowing anything and figuring out stuff as I go. So I didn't know much about this book. I loved it. Five out of five. The next book I read was Winter by Marissa Meyer. I finally read this. I read the other books in the series like over six years ago. It's been so long and I finished it. It was good. I definitely should have read it when I read the other books so that I could have enjoyed it more. I don't remember what happened, but you know, I finished it, whatever. The next book I read was 14 Ways to Die by Vincent Ralph. I was hoping for like a good girl's guide to murder vibes. It's really okay. Like it's not an amazing um, murder mystery, but it works really well for YA. It's a fun spin on the power of social media and creepy stalkers and murder mysteries for YA. So yeah, I do recommend this. I'd say if you liked A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, it's not gonna be as good, but you could definitely pick this up. All right, the next two books I read were Red Queen and Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. I liked these. They're not amazing. I'm so sad because they're not what everyone hypes them up to me, at least in my opinion, but that doesn't mean they aren't fun. We'll leave it like, we'll leave it at that before I say anything mean. I read King's Cage in between another book. I also don't have it with me, but I also read King's Cage, which is the third book in that. And I actually really liked that one because Maven is just evil and I love Maven. <laughs> the next book I read was We Were Never Here by Andrea Bartz. This is super fun. I'm addicted to thrillers. This was kind of my first dive into thrillers. It's about these two best friends that cover up a dead body. They try to get away with it. That's all I'm going to tell you. The last book I read in July was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Aha, uh -huh. this was my first year I dived into how incredible Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing is. And this was so good. I read this over the summer and loved it. So I highly recommend reading it over the summer. This book, really dives into family drama and family history and its timeline with the way it's told is just so fun. It's worth the hype. Taylor Jenkins Reid is worth the hype. I loved it. In August, I started with The Last Beautiful Girl by Nina Lauren. When I was in high school, I did a project on how beauty standards and internalizing beauty too much can make you really sick. And this really goes into that. The main character basically becomes way too beauty obsessed and goes crazy. It's not like a five star read, but it was, I think it was like four stars. It was good. I read Lockdown on London Lane by Beth Reckles. It reminds me a lot of quarantine 2020 because that's when it takes place. It's like that initial lockdown when everyone was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? We got a quarantine, COVID, what? It just is really nostalgic for that time because that was a weird time period in our lives. It's not by any means amazing. It's really not that good of a love story, but it's fun if you want to read about quarantine. Okay, this book I really, really liked. The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I am kind of obsessed with Final Girls. I delved into a lot of slasher books. I love it. I love it. That doesn't mean it doesn't scare me and haunt me, but I loved this. So immediately afterwards, I read Final Girls by Riley Sager. This was my very first Riley Sager book. I am obsessed with Riley Sager now. It has a fun plot twist. I recommend it. 
the next was Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This was really sci-fi-y and I didn't expect that. This dude kind of invents multi-dimensional travel and he's got other versions of himself fighting to get to his present even though he wants to get to his present because he's been kidnapped by another version of himself. Like what? That That's so intriguing. You gotta read it. It's a super fast short read. It's really fun and it's sci-fi-y. Okay this book I really thought was stupid. I tried to give spicy book talk another chance. I'm so sorry but I tried. I read The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. I love Peter Pan. I love Peter Pan retellings. I don't have anything nice to say about this, so we're just gonna move on. I like books with plot. The last book I read in August was The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. This is really cute. I would probably give this to an elementary schooler. It's got really basic concepts. It's told from a little kid's perspective, but they all just meet and talk about ghosts. And I think that'd be really fun to do in real life. I want a Saturday Night Ghost Club. I want a Saturday Night Ghost Club. The plot twist at the end had me pretty disappointed because I really liked the uncle's character in this and you get a plot twist and I'm kind of like, oh, that sucks. So I didn't end up loving this so much. This was like three stars. Okay, diving into September, I got to read The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the third book in the Inheritance Games trilogy. I was happy with how it closed. I highly recommend reading the Inheritance Games. Oh yeah, we got another Taylor Jenkins read book. One True Loves. I like that there's so much about grief and learning to really listen to what your heart wants and what your present needs and like, you know, there's this past version of you, there's this present version of you, where do you find that middle common ground? I don't think it's as good as her other books, but it's certainly fun. Um, I literally loved this book so much. I read it in a day. I ditched class <laughs> to finish it because there would have been no listening if I was in class. I wouldn't have cared. All I wanted to, to do was read this. Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood is so good. I loved the love hypothesis. This came out, read it in a day. This is just cute little STEM stories of people in science school and doing sciencey things, falling in love. Like, what? That's so cute. How can you say no? Okay, the last book I read in September was Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco. I honestly can't really remember this book. I read it so fast, but I loved the first two and I wasn't mad about how this ended. And I remember like something that happened in the first half that I was like, ooh, that's cool. So I definitely think it's four stars. It wasn't as good as the first two, but I'm not disappointed. I think if you're a fan of Akatar, read this trilogy. Okay, October was a fun month. I dove in to a bunch of thrillers. I wanted spooky reads. We dove right in with Survive the Night by Riley Sager. Long story short, this girl thinks she's trapped in a car with a serial killer. And she's like, holy crap, what do I do? It is so good. I read this in a night. It freaked me out. That's what you want out of a thriller. I love Riley Sager. So I couldn't help myself and I dove into another Riley Sager book and I read Lock Every Door. This is definitely in my top 10 of books I read this year. This girl is taking care of an apartment in New York and she's starting to think that lots of things are awry, the residents are weird, it's a sketchy situation, people are going missing. That's all you get to know because this book is so good. It'll leave you disturbed. Oh my god, it's so good. The next book I read was called Rules for Vanishing. It was also incredible. I read so many good books in October. My cousin recommended it to me. It's about this road in this town and it only appears every once in a while. You walk down it, there's these rules, there's these set rules. Supposedly people have gone missing on this road, never come back. The main character wants to find her sister. She goes down the road, she's like, oh my God, it's real. She has to follow the rules and she wants to save her sister. It terrified me. I was scared to go to bed. I didn't think the day would come when I said, Oh, I love a Colleen Hoover book. But then I read this. I read Verity by Colleen Hoover. I got my grandma to read it. I bought it for people for Christmas. This is such a good book. Long story short, Verity is an author of this famous book series. She gets in a car accident. She's kind of in a vegetative state. This main character is writing her book series and she's starting to think that Verity is not so much in a vegetative state. She's seeing her around the house that she is at 
because she's going through her office to write the books to continue the series. That was an awful summary. You just gotta read it. It's incredible. This is disturbing. If I, if I thought this was disturbing, this is disturbing. I only read two books in November. We've got The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. This is so cute. I liked it more than The Hating Game. Great enemies to lovers. I love it. I love it. It's super cute. If you want a cute romance, just go pick it up. All right. All right, you book talk people. I finally did it. I finally read A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. And the first half of this book was stupid. Nothing happened. But the second half, way better. I gave it like a 3.5 stars. And this book really sets up the stage for the second one, which diving into my December reads, I read A Court of Mist and Fury. I read A Court of Wings and Ruin and A Court of Frost and Starlight. And I'm currently on A Court of Silver Flames. So I'm probably gonna finish this and I'm almost to 60 books. This book is absolutely what they say it is. It's incredible. I wanna reread it already. They are so right about this book. They're so right. Okay, it's incredible. I'll tell you this. The way that Sarah J Maas takes her main character and tells her story and transforms you into loving this other character who you didn't think you would love, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. The way the story goes, it's so good. This had a lot of war in it. It reminds me a lot of the Crow Print series in that there's a lot of war and politics and that's really fun. And I like the war in politics. This is good. This was kind of stupid, but I feel like it's necessary for A Court of Silver Flames. I read it during Christmas time, so that kind of works. Read this during Christmas time. And there you have it. Those are all the books I've read since July. I broke up my first books I read the first six months of this year. So if you want to go check that out, go watch it in the link down below. And so yeah, I read a lot of books and hopefully I'll do even better next year. Stay tuned. I'm going to be posting my top 10 books soon. But what if I read something in the next week that's completely life-changing? Then we'll have to update a video. Happy holidays. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. See you next time.